Hello everybody, welcome to 27. I'm Jack and this is a TVR Tuscan Speed 6. Now for years, TVR seemed destined to remain a niche player in the sports car market. Then in the 90s, a major development looked set to bring TVR into the realms of the big boys. But a huge oversight squandered that opportunity and eventually also led to TVR's bankruptcy. In the mid-90s, TBR came up with a load of interesting and quite appealing new cars, but even more importantly, it made two of its very own engines. Up until this point, it had been using Rover's V8 under license. It then made the Speed 8 and the Speed 6. The Speed 8 was supposed to be the sort of top-end engine, the Speed 6 a little bit more approachable. But the key thing about these was that A, they were going to make the mark much more appealing having your own engines always adds a little bit extra sort of charisma to the cars but b they were designed to be sold on to other manufacturers and key as well to be used as race engines so it could have really turned tvr's fortunes around not only producing cars but when you start selling your own engines as well it could have really stabilized their financial position this car has the Speed 6. It is a fabulous engine that, however, was largely responsible for TVR's insolvency later on, along with an unexpected challenger from Germany. More about that later, but first, a bit more about this incredible engine. It has individual throttle bodies, a dry sump, it's an inline six, and it was designed by Al Melling. It has a lot in common with the 1991 GSXR 750, the Suzuki Superbike, it has finger and follower actuation for the valves. And that's really important because unlike bucket and shim, as you can see in this animation, it's got much lighter, smaller moving parts. Not only that, but it allows for a more aggressive cam profile so that essentially you're gonna get more power out of the engine. In four liter form, in this car, it puts out 360 horsepower. The car only weighs 1,100 kilograms, so it should be pretty feisty. And it all sounds pretty perfect. Let's take it out. I'll tell you what went wrong, and importantly, how it drives today. Now, the first thing to note is that it is absolutely not that this engine doesn't perform, as I'm gonna show you right now. thing is a real handful so wheels been on demand in at least first and second gear and the front end feels a little bit nervous but this engine is absolutely mega this beast, this beast of an engine. And it's in a chassis which definitely keeps you on your toes. That front end is so nervous. This is uh, the first Tuscan. By all accounts, the second version, they have made a little bit, they did some geometry changes and other bits and they made it a little bit easier to handle. This one is super sharp, super nervous. As soon as the road smoothens out like it has here, it's miles better. But on that first bumpy stretch of road, it felt like a really, really big handful, this car. Now the brakes, thankfully, are absolutely spot on. This is exactly what you want. It's a really firm brake pedal, loads of feel, and really reassuring because I can tell you, once you go up on the speed on this, and suddenly it starts moving around, you wanna slow it down as quickly as you can. It's nice to know that you can modulate that brake pressure. So 
Brakes excellent, engine absolutely freaking ballistic. Chassis, let's drive it a bit longer, but at the moment it feels like that front end is way too nervous. In the meantime, we have a slow car in front of us. Let's talk a bit about the looks and the interior. To me, the Tuscan was never really a pretty car. I absolutely admired and was all for the fact that they were so bonkers with it. And this Series 1 has some detailing, which is even crazier. They toned it down a bit in the Series 2 with the covered headlights or conventional rear headlights. So, okay, might not be the prettiest thing, but absolutely amazing. Well done, I love it all the same. And the interior, my God, this dash pod panel. It's like a, I don't know, it looks like a squid or something has been splattered on there. But then, you know, it's milled aluminium and then they have this lovely sort of brass looking switch gear. It is just these ventilation controls here on the sides these little eyeball vents there which direct air straight to your crotch <laughs> just mental i mean i love them but how could you do that it is just mad in the truest tbr tradition and again in the series two it was sanitized so i'm glad i got to drive the full fat version of this car other amazing things that's where the door button is to open the door on this as well I mean the indicator stalk fashioned out of solid aluminium I mean it's just incredible okay I'm a bit scared but <laughs> let's just do another pull with this mental engine engine it is just a little bit unsettling and short nice and light steering is quite light and when you're pooling around it's not really too intimidating but the moment you push that long travel throttle down all hell breaks loose this is probably the craziest car i've ever driven and let's be honest <laughs> the stereo keeps falling apart from the acceleration but Every time you sort of put your foot down, it's the combination of the noise, the forward thrust, and the fact that the back end just doesn't feel completely able to deal with that power. It's an interesting, intoxicating combination. Okay, so the chassis definitely, I think, has some limitations. It's still great fun. Um, but you, you'd have to be someone who's fairly handy with the car, I think, to drive this fast safely. But the engine is incredible, it looked incredible. The prices at the time, I think they're about 40,000. They weren't an outrageous price for the performance. But what was the issue? Well, the issue was one of reliability and these engines had a real likelihood to go pop. But crucially, it wasn't really a problem with the way the engine was designed that caused all these issues. It was because TBR themselves altered the design, maybe to reduce production costs. We're not sure exactly why Peter Wheeler did that. 
they changed the um, the crank from billet to cast iron and crucially they removed extra two lubrication holes from the exhaust camshaft which is crazy if you consider that's the part of the engine that gets the hottest what happened then was that there were lots of these engine failures and this should have been an opportunity for TVR to change their image, for TVR to become serious. Instead it did the opposite, it continued to cement the reputation that TVR had as a manufacturer which was akin to a kit car maker for cars that were unreliable. What happened then is that in 2003 the company went insolvent. It was bought by Smolensky, and ever since then it's never really fully recovered. There's supposed to be a new Griffith coming out. I think it was first revealed six years ago, but it's still not in customers' hands. But there is another thing as well that kind of helped to kill off TBR, as well as this engine. It was the fact that the Boxster was so successful. And you know, you can see this is an open top car. That was a little bit, that was a big market for TBR. The Boxster's success really hurt them at a time when their reputation was severely dented by the rely, rely, reliability of these engines as well. Now, after a while, you do get used to that absolutely ballistic front end and you become a bit more comfortable with it. But I have to say that I'm not sure if it's a car that I would feel comfortable driving to the limit. Perhaps after owning it for a while, start to become a bit more accustomed to, to its handling foibles, maybe it'd be okay. because the chassis is quite intense. The crackling on the overrun there, I'm not sure I'm a massive fan of, but uh, apart from that, it sounds mega, although very, very loud. So considering this has the typical TVR construction, so very similar to the Camaro that I drove recently so it's a ladder sort of chassis construction double wishbones so it's it's odd that it just feels so different it must all be down to the geometry the way the car is set up and it is set up to thrill and excite it is scary and perhaps once I know it better I'd get used to it a bit more but as a first acquaintance and a first drive it's an intimidating car to drive fast despite that it is absolutely amazing what a car, absolutely love it. Thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't seen the other TVR video, it gives you a bit of a history of TVR as well, then have a look at it here. If you have a, a car, one of your cars that you want me to review, then please get in touch. Thank you all so very much for watching.